Greetings friends, Craig here on the third floor for another uh, part of our series on painting the Dormador de Caveras by Weird Miniatures. We're going to be focusing on uh, black cloth, which I don't think we, which we haven't really gone into yet, and we're going to be painting the shawl uh, that goes around her uh, neck and off of her shoulders. And it's going to be black as well, and as I've mentioned when I talked about the video with the hair, the um, challenge with black is highlighting and shading it, and it's still looking like black when you're done. And the other challenge that we have here, because she has black hair that's kind of falling onto the black shawl, is we need these two things to look different. And we're going to do that two different ways. We're going to make them have a different color hue, but still be black. And we're going to show that they have a different shininess. So hair has, is a, has a much sharper um, highlights because it's shinier. We're gonna have much subtler highlights uh, with the shawl. Don't forget to like us on, fa on uh, Facebook as well as follow us on Twitter. And then like and subscribe to our channel uh, so that uh, when we put up the new videos, uh, you'll know about it. Uh, after we get done here with the shawl, we're gonna start focusing on the dress. So the uh, biggest feature on this um, model, we're gonna be talking about painting red, uh, red cloth, which can be a big challenge. But for now, let's focus on painting black cloth. Uh, grab your brushes, let's get started. All right, let's paint some black. Now I've already got some of uh, the Vallejo um, black on my palette, but we need to add a cool black um, that's a little bit lighter than pure black. So we're gonna add some P3 coal black to the palette. Uh, this is a good paint. Um, it's close to black, but not quite black. And uh, if you're gonna go for a cool black, uh, we're using the uh, Zero from Artist Opus, by the way. If you're looking for kind of a cool black, um, this one's great. It's got some nice blue in it. I've already got uh, some flow improver. You can see in the lower right corner of my palette. And the big thing here, of course, like we've talked about, is we need this to look different than the hair. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna define the highlights on the folds of the shawl. And uh, it's a, I'm looking at an overhead light. So I would say we're gonna cover about two thirds of the Vallejo black that's already on there with this coal black. And that's just gonna allow us to define it. And when you're painting black, um, it's a challenge because you wanna have shades and highlights and your shades can't be any more than just a pure black. Um, but when you're done, if you're not careful, you can lose uh, the fact that it is a black material. The other thing that's gonna be unique here versus the hair to make it stand out is not only is the hair a little bit of a, uh, a higher shine to it, we're gonna see um, a bit of a uh, less shine on here. And the way that we get a, a lesser shine is by being a little bit more um, strategic in how we do the highlights. The highlights are gonna be broader. When we did the hair, there were much sharper highlights, which gives it a shiny look. Here, we're gonna be a lot broader. So we're gonna go in, like I said, and we're gonna just define out these, uh, all of these uh, folds that are in the shawl with the light hitting from the top, covering about two thirds of the black. Different points in time, I stop and I put the uh, model under light from where the light's gonna be hitting, in this case from above, and, and just the natural reflectiveness, I can see where these highlights need to hit. So there's nothing wrong with cheating by seeing how light hits the model itself, because you're basically trying to duplicate this with paint. And it's very subtle, the difference between this coal black and the um, Vallejo black, which is what we want because I'm thinning my paint. It's allowing me to really have a nice gradation. Um, none of these should be very harsh transitions from the black to the coal black. If I find a transition as I'm looking at it and it seems too harsh between the black and the uh, P3 paint, then I just go in and just create a quick glaze on the fly by uh, adding some flow improver and just smoothing out that transition. 
uh, with a glaze. And because I'm thinning it so much, you'll notice I'm going over the same spots over and over again. This will uh, add the amount of pigment and make it stand out more. And when I go over it, I usually don't go over the whole thing. I'll go over a little bit less than the original coat. So again, we get those nice transitions. Here we get the front of her shawl. Already now, this black is looking different just because of the bluish nature of this paint is looking and standing out from the hair itself, which was all done in grays. Okay, now we're gonna bring in another uh, lighter gray that doesn't have that blue tone to it. This is rainy gray from uh, scale color and This is going to be mixed so I'm going to On the fly be mixing between the rainy gray and the coal black and My highlights now are going to be a little bit less and smaller and a little bit more focused but not nearly as sharp as we did with the hair so here you can see me mixing on my palette adding a little bit of rainy gray to the coal black getting a gradation between the two and we load up the brush make sure that uh, it's coming off the brush how we want it and now we go back into the curves and now you'll notice I'm not completely covering the original highlight it's a little bit lighter I go a little bit smaller not nearly as tight as I did on the hair and just to find where that light is hitting again not going too far as to lose the black you can see in the graphic in the upper right hand corner what I'm talking about and as we go through this now you'll notice that I start adding more and more of the rainy gray. And as I do that, my highlights get smaller and smaller. I start to define where the light is hitting. But by it being less sharp than the hair, it's gonna look different than the hair and not look nearly as shiny as uh, the hair would. As I add more flow improver, I get closer to a glaze that helps with transitions. So here there's a transition that looks pretty harsh. So I'm gonna make that smooth that out a little bit more. And I'm playing back and forth because I've got all of it on my wet palette. So I go down below if I want more of the cold black, I go up if I want a little bit more of the rainy gray. I lay down a few strokes, take a look at it, assess what needs to come up, what needs to be smoothed out and just play back and forth until the effect that I'm going for uh, is in place. You see me mixing. Obviously the shoulder is gonna be one of the brighter areas because it's higher up, plus it's a tighter fold. If you watched uh, the video I did on painting the hair, you'll notice how initially when both the hair and the shawl were black, it was hard to, to, to define which was which. The goal is, is when I finish this, um, because of the different techniques and colors used, they're gonna be both be black, but it'll be easy to tell where the hair starts and where the shawl ends and which is which in the sculpt. And all of that is being defined by the colors that I'm using and the tightness of the highlights will define the shininess of the material.
I've said this before, this is really an outstanding sculpt. So here I'm seeing a harsh transition between the black and the coal. So uh, I just quickly mix a mixture of the two, glaze it down a little bit with some flow improver to try to smooth that transition out a little bit more by pulling the pigment across. When that dries, it'll be a nice, smoother transition. So even though that we went from, you know, the black to the coal black to the rainy gray, you know, as I'm painting something as uh, smooth as, say, a cloth like this, you see me going back to my palette, remixing on the fly, um, and hitting different areas. This is why I personally think a wet palette is crucial. It allows me to do that, it keeps my paints alive. Now we're getting a much smaller and tighter highlight. You'll notice that I'm keeping track of where my highlights were hitting also on the hair to make sure I'm being consistent as far as how the light's falling. But again, not making these as harsh as the highlights were on the hair. As I get tighter, we get uh, more of that rainy gray. And then the final highlight is going to be a pure rainy gray, but it'll be, you know, worked down via the flow improver. So that again, the transition even to the pure rainy gray won't be really, really harsh. And if you're doing black right, it, um, unless it's a super shiny black, like the hair, when you're done, um, it it's, shouldn't look like you painted much, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, but uh, that's the challenge. Again, uh, we don't want to change the, the, the black nature. All right, so now we've got almost a pure rainy gray. So this is, these are going to be tight highlights here. Really making sure that I've defined where I see the light hitting. And you see how I ran them almost parallel to each other. You also see me running the paintbrush against my thumb. That's where I'm checking my brush control to make sure that the paint's coming off of it the way I want. Because as I get more and more precise, I uh, can't, can't afford to have the paint run off the brush too quickly. Some nice bright dots on the top of that shoulder. As I mentioned, eventually we're going to be doing some freehand on the back of this shawl. So, where the light's hitting, I'm defining the light now with the the base materials that'll help me when I do the freehand. Here I'm smoothing out these transitions. Constantly looking, checking, mixing on the palette until I get things where I want them to be. There we 
there we go. Like I said, it almost looks like she wasn't painted, but she is. Um, very subtle. And you can see that the black shawl looks very different from the hair, which is exactly what I was hoping to accomplish. Uh, here we got another transition that I need to smooth out a little bit. So again, I'm going back to the black and the coal and I'm thinning it down. And we're going to smooth out some of that uh, that transition that just looks like a little, a little harsh to me. see how because it's a glaze that it really does a great job of, of bridging that uh, transition between the colors. Yeah, there's the effect I was going for. It still looks black. All right, there she is finished. You can see the different light areas to find on the shawl. And then we compare that to how it looks on the black and both the shawl and the um, hair look black, but they look different. Uh, don't forget to follow us and like us on Facebook. You, know, you can find us at Third Floor Wars. You can also find us on Twitter at, at Third Floor Wars. As we put out new material, we'll always announce it on both platforms. Next up, we're gonna uh, get into the dress. Uh, so really probably the most important and dominant feature on here. So uh, stay tuned and we're going to learn how to paint uh, this red dress up. Don't forget to like and subscribe so when I get that video done, you'll know and you'll be notified. Take care.